Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. October 30th, 2017. 205 here on the great WRKO. Okay, let me ask you this. Is it now time for everybody in Boston, if you live in Boston, or it doesn't really matter, I'm just throwing it open to you, it can be anywhere in the state, in the state of Massachusetts, to pay for a residential parking permit? Well, they now want a new way to fleece everybody this time, so they want the tolling, they want tolling to be everywhere. They want it on 93, on 95, Route 1, Route 128, Route 2. Now they're even talking about charging you for parking right next to the sidewalk. I swear to you. So listen now to this, because this is never enough money with these people. So City Council President Michelle Wu uh, has now said that she's uh, pushing for a, a new campaign whereby to raise more revenue, again, to fund the roads, to fund the, uh, the highways, the bridges, etc., it's now time, she says, to impose a fee for residential parking. So she now wants a, a program in place in Boston, whereby you have to get a resident permit parking sticker, and pay a fee. It could either be from twenty-five to forty or fifty dollars every year for you to be able to park on your street. Now, apparently, uh, some suburbs of Boston, say Cambridge, Brookline, Somerville, they already have these parking permit fees ranging from, as I said, twenty-five to forty dollars a year. She wants Boston to now adopt the very same thing. Pay at least twenty-five, maybe forty or fifty dollars a year for the privilege of having a parking permit. So, not only do they want to, you know, bang you up with tolls on all the major highways and byways, now they want to stick you with another twenty-five, thirty, forty dollars a year for the privilege of parking on your street. Now. The reason why they say they're doing this is because there's no available parking, because Boston's becoming so crowded, so overcrowded, that to discourage residents who don't live, let's say, in that area, they want you to have a parking permit. That's the reason behind it. And so you don't have the sticker, you can't park. If you do park, you're either going to get ticketed or towed. But the, the, uh, the argument is we need this to avoid overcrowding and free up some available parking now what i've said before about this i want to repeat i don't know why you can't have residential parking permits but why do you have to charge them now for example my understanding is in boston right now you have to register your car etc but they don't charge you for that fee now they want to charge you for that fee so when I lived in Washington, D.C., very similar, overcrowded, overpopulation, uh, people were parking everywhere, so they did have residential parking permits. However, it came with your domicile. In other words, you rented an apartment, boom, you get a residential parking permit. You buy a house, whatever, you rent a townhouse, boom, you get a residential parking permit. But that comes with your property, that comes with whatever, your the place you live. You don't pay extra for it in northern virginia and suburban maryland so you have your sticker it's free you park on the street if somebody else who doesn't have that sticker parks on the street let's say during certain hours usually at night or whatever then they can be ticketed or they can be told uh towed away so there's towing or ticketing if you happen to park in a residential community let's say past seven o'clock at night whatever from seven till five in the morning or whatever why you have to bring in the fee is beyond me. The fee is a simple money gouge. That's all this is. It's, it's another cash grab. So they keep coming up with ways, whether it's now more tolls, whether it's fees, now it's residential parking permits, whatever they can do to <laughs> suck more and more money out of your pocket. Why? Why? Because they've raided the road fund. 
So the money and the gas tax and everything else that's supposed to go to the roads, they raid that. Secondly, when you've got politicians giving themselves 20 to $22 million pay raises, it's got to come out of somebody's pocket. And so it's got to come out from the tolls or residential parking permit fees. In other words, they got to make up the difference somehow. And what is to me incredible, is how shameless these politicians are. To me, if I stole your money, not that I ever would, but if I steal your money, if I stole your money, I wouldn't come back and smile on my, with a smile on my face and say, I want you to give me even more money. I would pocket the money and go home. Not these politicians in Massachusetts. Not these hacks. Not this hackorama. So listen now to Michael Capuano, congressman, He's on the Boston Herald, I think the, whatever, he's interviewed by the Boston Herald. Listen now to him say, oh, it's a fair question. It's a fair issue. We should have tolls on 93, on 95, on Route 2, on Route 1, on Route 128. It's a fair issue. We need the money. So cough it up. Roll it, Brittany. Well, first of all, it is a state issue. You're right about that. Second of all, there are federal laws that limit what they can do with roads that have been uh, built or significantly rehabbed with federal money. Um, but that, you know, that the state would be able to figure that out one road at a time. I mean, I, if, and I have, I read a little bit about it. I didn't get too deep into the details because it is a state issue and, you know, only so much had to do with it. Uh, the concept of equalizing across the board is one thing. Right. Um, I think that's fair and reasonable. Um, I also think that the, if, if it's used in order to um, deal with congestion in downtown Boston, um, that's used around the world in many different places. It's a controversial way to do it, but it is used. I think London uses it in Shanghai, and I know New York has considered it. Um, so that, that all those kinds of things, I think it's a reasonable thing to discuss uh, as to how to control traffic, how to spread the tax burden of people paying tolls, uh, why should it only be people coming in from the West. But those are fair questions. I don't think they presume an answer, but I do think it's a fair question, it's a fair to, question. Uh, to have an honest debate about it. Oh, we have to have an honest debate about it. You see, we have to equalize now the tolls. You get it? So I'm not just going to take money from you. I'm going to take money from uh, I'm going you know I'm going to take money from the other guy and the other guy and the other guy. See, we're going to take all of your money. We're going to equalize it. That's all. We're going to take more money. So I'm not just robbing Peter to play Paul. I'm going to be robbing Tommy and Jimmy and Jenny and Martha. I'm going to rob all of you. That's we got to equalize it. And don't forget, they do it in London and Shanghai. So if they do it in London and Chang and Shanghai, they got to do it in Boston. I'm like, what? Since when is Boston a on the level of London and Shanghai? For God's sakes, uh, London is one of the biggest cities in the world. It's a city state. So is Shanghai, by the way. I mean, this, I, I'm listening to these moon bats. I'm like, are you free? And they think that works. You know, for um, some of the hacks over at the Boston Herald or whatever at the Boston Globe, ooh, London, Shanghai, ooh, ooh London, Shanghai, ooh, just, we're, we're very big, we're very important. Right? Like, well, they do it in London and Shanghai. Why shouldn't they do it here? Because we're not London and we're not Shanghai. What, what are you talking to me about? Okay, that's that's point number one. Point number two. Notice with uh, Crapper Capuano. Okay, notice with this. That's a fair question. More tolls hitting you for $15, $20 a day to go into work and back. That's a fair question. But when you talk about building a wall, that's not fair. That's not a fair question. That's verboten. When you want to talk about cracking down on sanctuary cities, that's not fair. That's verboten. When you talk about cutting taxes, whoa, that's not a fair question. That's not a fair issue to debate. What do you mean? What do you mean cut taxes? We can't cut taxes. What, what do you mean crack down on illegal immigrants? What, what are you talking about? Build a wall? That's, that's extremist. That's, you're crazy. You can't even think of that. But when it comes to taking your money, then it's fair. Oh, then all's fair. It's all fair. I, I, the arrogance of these people. By the way, the city council voted them a pay rate, but voted themselves a pay raise last year, just like the crooks up on Beacon Hill. Now notice, 
Crapper Capuano never condemned the state. I know he's a congressman, but still never condemned the state legislature for giving themselves a $20 million pay increase. I didn't see Mikey speak out then. That, no, no, that was fair. You see, when they vote themselves a pay increase, that's a fair question. When they want to raise their money to pay for the pay increase, that's a fair question. That's always a fair money for illegals and amnesty for illegals. That's a fair question. But when it's time to put the taxpayers first, that's not a fair question. You know, this state is obsessed with discrimination and bigotry. Everywhere, everywhere. It's always racism. The Boston Red Sox fans are racist. Celtics fans are racist. Bruins fans are racist. Patriots fans are racist. Everybody's always racist, according to these moonbats. But notice they're the biggest bigots of all. They constantly discriminate against the taxpayers. The so-called deplorables. They are the biggest bigots. And the people who discriminate the most against the working middle class uh, tax-paying citizens of the state. The contempt that they have for us, they can barely even hide it. They can barely even hide it. So, let's do Crapper Capuano a favor. Why don't we give him a call? He says it's a fair question. So, let's, you know what, maybe it's not a fair question. How about, you know what, forget the tolls, and how about you give some money for Trump's wall? Huh? Better yet, how about you support a tax cut for middle working class people in Massachusetts? Hey, Mikey, is that not a fair question? So let's give Crapper Capuano a call. Uh, his number is 617-621-6208, 617-621-6208. That's uh, Capuano. You, know, you can tell him what you think is fair and what you think is not fair. Michelle Wu. The one that wants to charge you now for residential parking permits in Boston. 25 to 40 bucks a year. Because that's also fair and that's also reasonable. 617-635-3115. 617-635-3115. And the mastermind of this hall. Okay, Mr. Magoo. Tom McGee, the state senator who's also running as a mayoral candidate against Judy Kennedy. He's the guy that wants all these tolls all over Massachusetts. Um, a toll booth, Tommy Magoo. Okay. Let's give toll booth, Tommy Magoo, state senator McGee, a call, 617-722-1350. Let's give them a call and let's tell all of them two things. Number one, we don't want another toll nowhere. Nowhere. And number two, you want residential parking permits. That's fine. But not one dollar. Free. That's it. Free. You've taken enough money. You've stolen enough money. As they say in Eastern Europe, take, but not so much. 617-266. 6868 is the number. Let me ask you this. Should there be residential parking permits that you pay a fee for every year, $25, $30, $40, and they want tolls, they want parking permit fees, they want $16 for you to just drop somebody off at the uh, Logan Airport? I mean, at this point, really, really, why don't we just give them our wallet? 617-266-6868. Your calls next. 222 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends. As if the cost of living in Boston wasn't high enough already. Now they want you to pay for street parking. They want to charge you a fee for a residential parking permit. They're thinking maybe they're going to start low, 25 bucks kind of nickel and dime you, and then start going to 40 Mark my words, they're going to go to $40, $50, maybe 100 bucks before you know it. 617-266-6868. And blank you, as my uncle used to say. Christine in Boston. Go ahead, Christine. Hi, Jeff. Uh, my, my heart and my prayers are with you all. Thank you. Thank you very you much, know, Christine. 
you know, Jeff, it's not about money only. It's about power and control over the people. And I don't know about you, but I I don't even know where the tolls are. And, and that's even a huge, a bigger problem if they're going to be adding all these tolls everywhere. But it's really about more power and control over the people. And uh, I just think a lot of good people have been doing nothing. And you know what happens? Evil prospers when good people do nothing. So I think we all have to really start to fight more and more and more. I agree with you, Christine, and thank you for that call. Uh, look, I, I said this just when we were off break. Um, I think Trump, believe it or not, is going to light the fuse for a major tax revolt in this state. Why do I say that? If his tax reform plan passes in any way, shape, or form, the deductions that we've been getting in high-tax states like Massachusetts or New York or New Jersey or California – those are going to be gone. So the deductions that we get for state income taxes, local taxes, property taxes, those are going to be gone, which means now the low-tax states are going to stop underwriting or subsidizing the high-tax states. And what this means for us, our taxes are going to go up. I hate to say it, but they're going to go up. The only good thing about it is everybody now in Massachusetts is going to really feel really feel it now, how much they truly pay in state income taxes, in our sales taxes, in our local taxes, in our property taxes. And I think when they now feel the full brunt of it, because they're not going to be able to have the deductions to cushion them from the federal income taxes, they're going to wake up and they're going to say, oh my God, how much are we paying and what are we getting for it? And then you want to load it up with tolls. And you're right, Christine. It's tolls now because it's all electronic tolling. You're driving. You don't even know if it's a toll or not. You're just driving and zip, 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 zip. Just off your easy pass. Zip. If you don't have an easy pass, they, uh, they, they photograph your ticket and, sorry, your license plate and send you something in the mail and, you know, pay it. And so now they want parking permit fees. You can't take blood from a stone. And what's going to happen? Remember, the American Revolution was born in a major tax revolt. I think you're going to see a second Boston Tea Party. I think you're going to see the citizens of this state, really, the peasants, are going to say, enough's enough. You cannot keep gouging us. There's a certain point where you can steal, but you can't steal that much. And I think they've become so arrogant so drunk with power, it's a one-party state, that they think they can keep taking and taking and taking, and the citizens, the peasants, are going to take it. After this tax reform, if it passes, I think their days are going to be numbered. And I'm telling you right now, I will lead the way. I will have a massive march on these, uh, uh, right there on Beacon Hill, right in front, for a major tax revolt. Because we are overtaxed, overregulated, we are shafted. If you're a hardworking taxpayer in this state, you are being discriminated against. You are. That's just a fact. Well, we're tired of riding the back of the bus. We now want to ride to the front of the bus. You're going to start defending our interests. For once, we're going to put our interests first. Skippy and Southie, go ahead, Skippy. Hey, Jeff. Um, I was listening to that sound by the Capuano, and he's talking about how the, it's really unfair that everybody pays this toll, which, by the way, uh, there's going to be more gantries than there was ever toll booths. So they, we're going to be paying more, even though we think we don't know that they're there. They're there. Uh, the toll booths used to slow us down. They got rid of the toll booths mostly because there was a lot of thievery, so they want to get more efficient at bringing money in. And, them, and this way, they can really nail us with bills and fines and fees if you don't pay it on time. But he said about being fair. He should remember when he was a state legislator. Along with his nice uh, salary, he got an extra kiss, a stipend, for going to and coming from work, vice versa, that we pay. Which means we're also going to end their rides. They'll come into the city, and whatever it costs and tolls, we're paying it because they get a stipend. Bingo. So there's nothing fair about it. Bingo. In fact, I mentioned this in last week's show. When they gave themselves a massive pay increase, 
they also increased their travel expenses. So they already knew that they were going to be raising our tolls and raising our fees. They knew this already. So they said, hmm, even that, the pay raise wasn't enough. They go, no, no, let's load up on the travel expenses. So guess who's going to be paying? They'll put tolls up. Oh, yeah, but they won't pay a penny of it. So not only are you going to be paying for your uh, increased tolls and fees, you're paying for the politicians is increased tolls and fees. That's why we have to say enough is enough. Okay, Michelle Wu's phone number, if you want to protest, charging you now for a residential parking permit, 25 to 40 bucks in Boston, 617-635-3115. 617-635-3115. Six three five thirty one fifteen. Mike Capuano, Congressman. It's a fair question. Let's load up the whole state with tolls. Give Crapper Capuano a call. Six one seven six two one sixty two zero eight. Six one seven six two one six two zero eight. And the Godfather of the whole thing, State Senator Tom McGee, otherwise known as Toll Toll Booth Tommy Magoo. Give him a call. 617-722-1350. Got a lot more. Trust me. Evan Heidenrich has the latest on the White House reaction to the indictments of Paul Manafort. 235 here on the great WRKO. Okay, my friends, let me ask you this. Should you pay for a residential parking permit? Do you think it's fair to squeeze you for another fee, let's say in Boston, I know they do it already, but Cambridge, Somerville, Brookline, or is this more discrimination against the taxpayers of this state? 617-266-6868 is the number. And let me throw one more log on the fire. So as you know, they don't have money for the roads. They don't have money for the potholes, for maintenance, for any of that. There's never any money. But there's always money for the illegals. There's always money for sanctuary cities. There's always money for them to line their pockets with pay increases. And there's also always money to cater to the LGBTQ, A, P, C, D, E, whatever, A to Z uh, uh, community. So listen now to the latest. So this is going to cost you some more money. So apparently now, State Senator Karen Spilka, a Democrat from Ashland, now says that it's time for all driver's licenses and state IDs here in the People's Republic of Massachusetts to have a third option for gender identity. You know, as it is now, like it's always been, it's male, female. No. Now they want to reissue all of these licenses, all of these state IDs going into the future with three categories, male, female, and the key one now, they call it the non-binary option. You know, binary isn't, you know, one or the other. No, they want a non-binary option, which is an X, an X. And they want this X on learner's permits, driver's licenses, ID cards. And these are for people, I swear to you, who don't identify as either male or female. So it's not just transgendered people. It's uh, transsexuals. It's people who are gender fluid. It's people who are literally, they're just not sure if they're a man or a woman. And they feel uncomfortable saying, you know, checking off man, male, or checking off female. So, and the reason why she's filed this legislation, and mark my words, it's making its way up on Beacon Hill, is because she got a letter from one person. Who is this one person? She got a letter from one 16-year-old from her district, who wrote to her about her, or his, I guess, uh, gender identity issues. And according to this 16-year-old teenager, preparing to get a driver's license, the person was asked, you know, okay, so male or female? And she, cut, she doesn't know, or he doesn't know, if 
she's a boy or a girl, a male or a doesn't know, male or a female, and why am I being forced to choose? And so because she's being or he's being forced to choose, it's a violation of that person's civil liberties, it's a violation of that person's civil rights, it's a violation of that person's dignity, and so now they have to reissue, going into the future, all state IDs, driver's licenses, and learner's permits with three options, male, female, and just a simple X. Now, a couple of quick points, then I want to throw it open to you. Number one, this is that, that, that this is going to cost us a ton of money. Okay, number one, this is going to be very expensive. Number one. Number two, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, for all of human history, we've had male, female. And I don't know, call me crazy, I think it's worked. I think it looked pretty good. You know? So, for example, something like state identification or driver's licenses. Whatever the plumbing is, whatever the plumbing is at the time of your ID, I don't care what you were born, you get a sex change operation, that's fine, you're now a, we're a male, you became a female, you're a female, you became a male, whatever, whatever the plumbing is, that's what you mark down. How you feel, that's your business. I'm serious, whatever you feel, it's a free country, you can feel anything. Look, hey, some days I feel like a billionaire. Doesn't mean I have a billion dollars in my bank account, but I feel like a billionaire, Okay. The problem with this is, it's a war against reality, it's a war against objective truth, but it's also very dangerous, because there's many reasons why you have to have state IDs, driver's licenses, etc. One of them, there's many, but one of them is, say the person is a criminal, just for the sake of argument. You want to track the person down. You need objective criteria. Six foot three, 250 pounds, brown hair, blue eyes, let's say Caucasian, right? Uh, male or female. So you can identify the person objectively. Doesn't matter how you feel. Now, I may, you know, Brittany's five foot two, five foot three. I don't know. I've never spoken to Brittany about this. There's nothing wrong with being five foot two, five foot three. My wife is five foot two, five foot three. But, you know, maybe Brittany wants to be six foot three. I'm just saying. So just because she claims to be six foot three doesn't make her six foot three. Brittany, you know, she's got red hair, freckles. You know, she's white. Maybe Brittany wants to be Latino. She wants to be a Latina. Maybe Brittany wants to be Asian. Maybe Brittany thinks of herself as black. I don't know. She's listening to a lot of rock, you know, rap and hip hop. She feels black. Okay. I have a black soul, Jeff. That may be. But you're white. I'm sorry. That's your skin color. Now, it's not racism. It's, uh, it's recognition of a fundamental objective reality. You know, I'm 200 and let's just say, let's be generous here, 255 pounds. Let's be generous. I'd love to be 195, but I can't mark 195. Why? Because I'm not 195. I may want to think I'm 195. I may think I look like 195, but I'm not 195. I'm 255 on a good day. Well, it's the same thing. If I'm tracking somebody down, one of the biggest things to identify the person is, is it a male or is it a female? Well, if I'm looking at an X, now I know there's a picture, but still, to be honest with you, nowadays, you can have really short hair, short hair, and you know, take even names. There are many names now. It's, you know, I don't know, Chris. Chris used to be a male name. Chris now could be Christine, could be Christopher. So if I'm looking at Chris Smith, very short hair, with, you know, the way they, I don't know. Chris Smith, I would guess a man, but it could be a woman. So what does it say? Am I looking for a male or a female? Well, I'm looking for X. Well, what's X? I don't know, Jeff. Good luck. So you want us to spend, God knows, millions of dollars to redo state IDs, state driver's licenses to provide a third option. So we're going to make it harder to identify people. Why? Because one 16-year-old teenager, for whatever reason, 
not comfortable in his body, her body, wrote a so-called, quote-unquote, moving letter. And this moonbat says, because of this moving letter, all of society now has to be changed. You see where I'm going with this? This is the very definition of insanity. Agree, disagree, 617-266-6868. Henry in Dover. Go ahead, Henry. Hello, Henry. Okay, we lost Henry. And, uh, Scott in Weymouth. Go ahead, Scott. Jeff, good afternoon, sir. Hi. My first time calling, my friend. How are you? Welcome. Welcome, Scott. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to be a regular caller if I can squeeze it in. But, um, yeah, like you so uh, eloquently stated, this illustrates the lunacy of liberalism. It really is a mental disorder. I say this to my friends that are liberals. I go, you're literally mentally sick. Like, are you kidding me? Well, now we have a third gender? Are you, are you out of your mind? Like my uncle said, my late uncle, he goes, you can, you can tape wings to a dog, but that doesn't make it a bird. You know what I mean? Yes. It, 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 is, it is what it is. And uh, I'll leave with this comment, Jeff, because I'm enjoying listening to, listening to you rather than listening to me, believe me. Um, it, it's common sense, Jeff, and it, it's, a, it's a fleeting characteristic in this country. There's no more common sense. These liberals, they're sick people, mentally ill, and I'm not being facetious. They're sick between years. Common sense is gone, and hence why Trump won, because Hillary's another moon bat, as you, as you state. Jeff, thank you for the time. I'll talk to you Thank again you. Uh, Scott, I agree with you. Look, this is a war on human nature. This is a war on reality. It's ultimately a war on common sense. Now, look, really, honestly, I'm a, I'm a constitutionalist, really, for the most part, I'm a libertarian. Believe it or not, I really am a live and let live kind of a guy. Like, really, honestly, you'd love me for a neighbor. I'm telling you, I never stick my nose in your affairs. What you do in the privacy of your own bedroom, honest to God, is not the government's business. It's not Jeff Cooner's business. It really isn't. Now, and I'm being serious. You know, Jeff, listen, I'm a guy. I feel like a girl. I always have. Is something wrong? Fine. Look, get a sex change operation. Don't get a sex change operation. It's a free country, honest to God. But what you're now seeing is you want to rope me in. You're coercing me into your pathology. So, in other words, I'm a man, but I think I'm a woman. You must also see me as a woman, but you're not a woman. No, no, it doesn't matter. I demand that you see me as a woman. I know, but you're not a woman. In other words, reverse it. Let's say, honestly, really, in fact, to be very fair, quick story, Grace used to be a professor at Howard University, historically all-black college. So we took the kids on a trip to France. This was when Grace was still a teacher there. It, the, 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 the kids, by the way, were great kids. Kids, they were college students. They were young adults. I call them kids affectionately. All of them were African-American, except, I kid you not, there was one guy. He was a white kid, like white, like, like Britney White. I mean, like fair skin, red hair, freckles. Probably Irish, Scottish, Scotch-Irish, whatever. For whatever reason, and this is his business, the other African-American kids would also point to him and say, like, he's weird. Like, why is he weird? Because he acts black. This is what they, this is what they were telling me. He thinks he's black. They would just look at me like, he listens to black music. He immerses himself in black culture. He walks or tries to talk like he's african-american they're his mannerisms this is what the kids are telling me okay and they go he's just strange mr cooner he's just strange because they're like he's just he's not black you know he's just he's white like he's whiter than i am now it's a free country you want to whatever i don't care do whatever you want to do but if he said to me for identification purposes when you put down my race I am black. I'm like, but you're not. Well, I find it insulting. I don't care if you find it insulting. You're not black. The reason why it's important is if we need to track you down for whatever reason, okay, you commit a crime for the sake of argument, okay? Joe Sixpack, six feet, 190 pounds, red hair, freckles, black? No, white. So I'm not looking for a, I'm looking for a white person, not a black person. 
It's just common sense. So you would never accept it if I said to you, oh, guys, I'm black. You would look at me and say, Jeff, you're nuts. No, no, I'm black. I want you to mark down my race is not Caucasian, it's black. Or if you're Elizabeth Warren, Native American Cherokee. Well, no, Jeff, it's not reality. Nothing wrong with being black, nothing wrong with being white, nothing wrong with being whatever, Hispanic, or whatever the color of your skin. It's not reality. They want us now to acknowledge this when it comes to gender. Why? Because it's politically correct. And you know who pays for it? Are you. Aaron in New Hampshire. Go ahead, Aaron. Good afternoon, Jeff. Hi, Aaron. Uh, real quick, th thoughts and prayers to you and your family. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, it, you talk about redistribution of wealth a lot. Political correctness is nothing but redistribution of insanity. I swear it is. You know, what sane society will have a 16-year-old dictate what everybody else has to do? Here's the deal, bud. All these people, whether it's with this license situation, Washington, like you were talking about earlier, everything that we deal with with political correctness, all of the problem is within these people. And instead of them looking into a mirror and fixing themselves, it's easier for them to point the finger at everybody else. If they can bring the rest of society down, they will feel comfortable because then everybody will be just like them. The only way this is going to stop is that if we stand up and we sit there and say, no, this is our society, this is our country, this is the way things go, and you have to fix yourself. Bingo. Uh, you nailed it. Personal responsibility. You nailed it. But I want to make one other quick point. The big disease among liberalism and progressivism is, and I think it's slowly killing America if we don't reverse it, everybody's becoming a busybody. If you notice, liberals and progressives are always sticking their nose in everybody else's business but their own. Have you noticed that? They're always, you're a racist, you're a bigot, you're a, whatever it is. One teenager writes a letter, and suddenly, you know, everybody has to recognize the fact that I'm not sure whether I'm a male or a female. So the whole society, because I'm not sure, i got to stick my nose in all of your affairs, and you have to mark down X on a driver's license, because if I'm not sure, you shouldn't be sure. I mean, whatever it is, they are always sticking their nose in everybody else's business. And to me, this is the biggest problem. Tend to your own garden. Take care of yourself. Take care of your family. Mind your own business. Now, you want to pretend to be a boy. You want to pretend to be a girl. You want to be male, you want to be female, you want to be purple. I'm serious, you want to be a Martian? Hey, it's a free country. But don't do it on my time, and don't do it on my dime. 2.55 here on the great WRKO. Okay, Mason Dunn, the executive director of the Massachusetts Transgender Political Coalition. They're backing this proposal all the way. They definitely want all of our driver's licenses and state IDs to now have at least a third option, maybe even more, uh, not just male or female, but X, says that people who don't identify as male or female use different terms to describe themselves, including non-binary, gender fluid, bi-gender, so I guess they're both, bi-gender, I'm like, Half man, half woman, okay? And a gender. I've never heard of this term before. I don't know what that means. Like, I really, I don't know what that means. And a gender. Some, but not all, identify as transgender. So this X, for now, is going to cover all of them. But I think in the future, you're going to start seeing, you know, a, a third, fourth, a fourth option, fifth option, sixth option, uh, there are going to be about 20, 25, 30 options up there on your on your driver's license. Uh, there are a lot of people who don't fit the textbook definitions of male or female, Dunn says. Well, yeah, there's also a lot of people who don't fit the textbook definitions of sane or insane. And I think that qualif you, you qualify for that. Are you sane or insane? I don't know. Depends what day and depends how you feel in the morning. Richard in Brighton. Go ahead, Richard. How you doing, Jeff? Sorry for your loss of your friend. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, uh, this is just ridiculous. You know, I got to be honest. I never participated in the political system, but I'm so sick of these liberals. I'm, I'm born and raised from Boston. I'm so sick of these liberals that I finally registered to vote this year as a Republican. And I know there's not enough of us in the state of Massachusetts to get rid of these clowns, but they got to go. There's got to be another revolution. These transgender people. I mean, come on, will you? What's that, like a Toyota uh, Prius? Or that we got hybrid human beings now? Thank you. Thank you for that call. And by the way, there's a growing army of us. Don't let the media uh, trick you or deceive you into thinking that we're some kind of an insignificant, beleaguered minority. We're big, and we're getting bigger and bigger. And if they continue to take our money like this and gouge us and tax us, and, you know, I got a lot of texters saying Jerry Williams, the great Jerry Williams, used to say a fee is a tax. Well, a toll is a tax. If they keep taxing us like this, they're going to see the mother of all tax revolts. Okay, my friends, um, about two minutes left in the show. I will not be here tomorrow. I will not be here on Wednesday. I will be back on Thursday, God willing. There's going to be a huge special announcement on the show at 2.35. Mike Siegel will be filling in for me tomorrow and I believe Wednesday as well. The reason why is I need to go to a wake tonight and then a funeral tomorrow for a very dear friend. Uh, the reason why I have not mentioned this person's name, even though some people have made it public, is because the widow and the two children have expressly asked me not to, saying this was the wishes of the person who died, that the wake remain private and the funeral remain private. So to respect their wishes, their dignity, their privacy, and of course the person who died, um, that's the reason why I have not said this person's name. But I just want you to know, uh, today was a very tough show for me. It was for Brittany, for Jared, everybody here on the Cooner Report. I'm wearing black. Brittany's wearing black. Uh, we are in mourning. And I just want all of you to know that this person thought the world of the show, but he thought the world of you. He loved Cooner Country. And he saw himself as one of you, defending you, and doing his best to represent you. And so, obviously, I'll be talking about this a little bit more later in the week. But I know that he's looking down from heaven, and he thanks all of you. And if you could put him in your thoughts and prayers, I would immensely appreciate it. God bless you, and I'll see you all on Thursday. The voice of Boston is you. 680 WRKO Boston, 93.7 WEEI HD2 Lawrence Boston. It's 3 o'clock.